I've heard people compare Cursor to having like a junior developer working for you. And I can see how they would make that comparison, but it's more like having- Why, good day, sir. Why, good day, sirs. I have returned for another episode of my vlog wherein I discuss the feature that I've been working on for my app. The feature in the last episode, I called it, uh, what did I call it? In the last episode, I called it the web to audio feature, but now I'm calling it the text to audio feature. And I've made some progress on the text to audio feature for my website reader, Web Out Loud, which you may or may not have heard of. I'm making progress. However, there have been some complications, shall we say, because I did spend about an entire couple of days going down a dead end. Have you ever done this as a developer? I'm sure many developers here, if you're listening to this or watching this, perhaps you're also a developer and you, you've, you've, you've experienced dead ends. The old dead end. I have many branches named whatever dash dead end and Yesterday I created another one because I started working on this feature, building a bunch of code, writing some stuff, and it started feeling very, very difficult. And um, eventually I realized that this feature is almost identical to an existing feature I already have. It's almost like a reskinning of it. And that is the summaries feature of Web Out Loud. So what the summaries feature does is it just extracts all of the text from whatever you have open in the app. It sends it over to OpenAI and OpenAI will summarize it for you. Now that's essentially exactly, that's almost identical to what the text to audio feature is doing, except instead of sending it over to OpenAI, it's sending it to my backend to convert into an audio file. So what I realized is that I can just piggyback off of this, the summarize feature code. With some minor variations, I can just use that code for the text to audio feature. And I realized this after going down a dead end for two days, unfortunately, but now I'm on the right track. I feel like I'm on the right track. I feel a lot better about this project and I'm making progress. Although code wise, I haven't done much since the last episode. So if you were my boss or something, you'd probably think I was a f up, but uh, I feel great about it. And that's what's important. I feel great uh, at this point, at this, at this point in time, I feel good about it. There's still the unknowns. I still have to build the whole back end, which I will get started on soon, but just allow me to show you what I have. It's not much, but I'll show you. So you hit the share button, you come up on this save as audio file, boosh, you hit that. And then this is the, this is what you get. This is what you get right now. It's not much, but there you go. It's initializing. But I actually do have the text extraction working under the hood. And I would show you the code for that, but I don't want to bore myself or I don't want to offend the gods. I don't know if that's really necessary. I mean, the code for this app, I, I released this app in 2014. This app has so much organic growth on it and the code base is so idiosyncratic, which leads me to another topic. And I might actually title the video this because that would probably get me more organic traffic. But I experimented with using Cursor and I gotta tell you, it's it's very interesting. I used the uh, Compose feature. I don't know if you're familiar with Cursor. Here it is up on my screen right here. My free trial has ended, what do you know? Anyway, I've been using the Compose feature and I've heard people compare Cursor to having like a junior developer working for you. And I can see how they would make that comparison, but it's more like having a junior developer that's really unjustifiably overly confident in their abilities and will just plow forward with doing things without asking questions. And while that's nice, you're not getting all of the annoying questions that keep interrupting you from doing your work, it just produces a bunch of wrong stuff. Stuff that uh, just, stuff is that is not what you had in mind. I guess you could say it works, but it doesn't match the style of all the other stuff in the app. And there's a lot of things that are just wrong. And a lot of that probably has to do with the structure of my code base. Like I said, it's a, it's a code base that has a lot of organic growth in it. It has a lot of stuff that if some kind of professional software architect looked at it, they would probably be offended and think that I'm some kind of amateur. But I have a philosophy when building my apps to kind of not with things as much as possible. 
because I prioritize working software over pretty code. Pretty code is essentially worthless to the user. But I think a tool like Cursor would probably work a lot better on code bases that are very structured, where there's a protocol for everything and like everything is designed. So you can just be very specific about what you want it to do. And it would be unlikely for it to make mistakes or to do things in a way that you didn't intend. So I could see how maybe it would be useful in that scenario. But so far, it's I spend more time just cleaning up and correcting the code that it creates than actually getting work done. But that's not to say I don't use AI in general. I use AI a lot in my development. AI is especially good at things like when you have, as I was saying, like it's very good when you have a very well-defined parameters. Like if you have a function in mind that has very specific inputs and you want a very particular output, AI is really good at doing that. And I use it for that kind of stuff all the time. And of course, when I'm in, in, in um, discovery mode and stuff, it's very useful for that too. Although it gives you completely incorrect code all the time, especially with uh, Swift and Swift UI related stuff due to the fact that Swift has been evolving so quickly over the last few years and Swift UI is so new and things are changing so often and there's dearth of information online. And that's not the same for languages like JavaScript and Python. So uh, AI is much better at helping you with those languages. Anyway, now that I've all almost finished the video, how about I take a look at my to-do list on what to talk about in the video? <laughs> Where's my video notes? So in my notes, I said, go over what I did, converting parser output to, to right. Yeah, I already talked about what I did. Um, Tiptoeing into cursor, yeah, I talked about that too. Is it really like having a junior coworker? Kind of. So that's all the bullet points I had for talking about in this video. So I'm going to keep working on this thing because I really want to get this thing out into the wild for my beloved Web Out Loud users who I love and appreciate. I want them to have this. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.